A diplomatic spat between China and Lithuania has become a test case for how the European Union intends to deal with Beijing. China has downgraded diplomatic ties with Lithuania and recalled its ambassador after Vilnius allowed Taiwan to open its de facto embassy there. China regards Taiwan as a breakaway province and countries that established relations with the island soon find themselves at the receiving end of Chinese anger. I'll be talking to an expert on what this anger against Lithuania means for larger European engagement with China. But first, this wrap of how we got here. It was a modest ceremony, but a huge political event. Taiwan opening a representation office in Lithuania's capital Vilnius. What set it apart is nomenclature. It's the Taiwanese representative office, not that of Taipei, the capital, which other countries use to avoid angering China. Lithuania went ahead anyway. Infringing on China's sovereignty will come with a price to pay, and those with the wrong thinking should drop their illusions. We are sternly warning Lithuania again to take the concrete actions to correct their mistakes. It was the culmination so far of an unequal yet ongoing showdown. In May this year, Lithuania withdrew from a grouping of European states promoting the Belt and Road Initiative. That's China's global infrastructure plan, which in Europe includes energy, roadway and container port projects. In July, Lithuania revealed it had agreed to let Taiwan open a representative office under its own name. The office in a riverside building was a diplomatic breakthrough for Taiwan. The news enraged China, which withdrew its ambassador to Lithuania and began applying economic pressure. Secondary sanctions, because we are feeling that as well, that the companies that we are working with, not in China, but in other countries, are being approached by China and said that they should not be working with Lithuania. Then, in September, Lithuania's defense ministry said a popular phone made by Chinese company Xiaomi had a hidden feature. It could recognize terms censored in China, like student movement, Taiwan independence and dictatorship. The ministry said although the feature was dormant, it could be switched on any time from Beijing. Xiaomi says its devices do not censor communications. And in November, Taiwan opened its de facto embassy in Vilnius, the island's first new diplomatic outpost in Europe in 18 years. Lithuania, an EU member, has said it would appreciate more support from Brussels in its David and Goliath dispute with China. And joining me now for more is Velina Chakarova. She's director of the Austrian Institute for European and Security Policy, and she joins me now from Vienna. Mrs. Chakarova, welcome. Lithuania's foreign minister has said his country would, quote, appreciate stronger EU support in its dispute with China. Has he received it? Well, verbally, for sure, uh, diplomatically, uh, the European Union has reiterated re support for Lithuania in this uh, precarious role uh, with China over uh, the opening of a Taiwanese uh, mission, basically the first ever in Europe. Uh, and in a sense, uh, the European Commission uh, has already officially announced its support. Uh, there have been many, many statements coming from member states and also the institutions expressing solidarity and support for Vilnius in this uh, role with China. Uh, uh, statements of support is one thing, but uh, how does that translate into an EU-wide policy on dealing with China? I mean, there's always been this talk of solidarity. It is something that uh, EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell has also alluded to in the past. He has said Europeans have to create a common strategic culture. So I'm just wondering, what does this all add up to? How does the EU deal with China? 
Well, as a geopolitical analyst, uh, of course, I have to be uh, very open with you. And the anticipation is that the European Union will actually stick to the one China principle on uh, the Taiwan question. That means, of course, that uh, there are a lot of layers of uh, interests uh, when it comes to the relationship between the European Union and China. And in this broader geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, context, I do not expect that uh, the European Union will change its stance on China. So China first, of course. Uh, and um, well, uh, then, of course, uh, there is uh, the reality uh, of uh, systemic competition, systemic rivalry between Washington and uh, Beijing right now, and the official policy or approach, if you like, of the European Union and the member states is a kind of a equidistance. Uh, that means not taking sides in this uh, systemic rivalry, trying to capitalize to, uh, you know, gain win-win uh, scenarios for uh, the European positions. So in a sense, uh, if we uh, look at it from this broader context, uh, my anticipation is that uh, there will be uh, no uh, real change in policy and specifically in business ties right. uh, with China. But the at the very same time, I must also say that the investment deal, this very important step in facilitating the relationship between the European Union and China that was signed in December last year, had been put on uh, hold. And right. I don't see a big move in that uh, direction as well. You know, Valina, you say that the EU, you don't anticipate a change in the EU stance moving forward. To some, it would seem like uh, European values of human rights and democracy are taking a backseat to European business interests. Would you agree with that? Well, this is definitely the case. Uh, and I uh, am afraid that we might end up with a scenario where their Western uh, position, the Western uh, view uh, will be split in a sense that uh, there will be a kind of an Anglosphere position in dealing with China. And we observe that already with the AUKUS uh, Security and Defense Pact, uh, uh, Security and Defense Pact between the United States, Australia and the UK, and the continental European position, where, of course, uh, these democracies want to stick to the rules-based order and multilateralism. But when it comes to business ties, of course, uh, the expectation is to uh, keep, uh, you know, uh, the priority of uh, having a solid and long-term relationship with uh, China. And how this comes, uh, how does this come together? This is going to be very challenging for the European Union in the long term. And in a sense, Lithuania set an example because uh, it's, of course, about uh, you know the strong single signal coming from a kind of authoritarian rule of governance. Uh, and that uh, means, of course, uh, China, Russia, Belarus, which is currently also applying a hybrid attack on Lithuania, Latvia, and uh, Poland by right. instrumentalizing migration flows. So in a sense, this kind of uh, authoritarian uh, approach is going to increase the pressure not only on Lithuania, not only on single individual member state, but right. on the whole. And there, of course, uh, this, of course, will require a much more, uh, you know, solid response than the current one. Velina Chakarova, we'll have to leave it there for the time being, but thank you so much for joining us today. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.